This is a brick.
Hello everyone, welcome to the Programming in Progress stream. This is uh, Mike, or Programming in Progress. So, let's switch to face cam. Ah, there we go. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be continuing the Rock, Paper, Scissors uh, WebSocket enabled Rock, Paper, Scissors game. Um, so, before we got the basic functionality working, we can now play Rock, Paper, Scissors and our uh, WebSocket server will match players together and allow them to submit their uh, answers and then come back with either win, lose or draw. Um, before we get into the uh, thick of it, I'm just going to bring up the project board. Okay, so I'm going to switch to cool viewers. Yeah, we go. Okay, so here's our project board. So my intention in the last stream was to use this board a little bit more because it's very, very useful. Um, I've added a few more tasks to it. Um, so you can see in the right hand column there, we've got a few things done. We've got our uh, decision maker done and we uh, built the mechanisms to relay decisions back to the user via WebSockets. So I've added a few things. Uh, to the to the board today, we want to add uh, things such as rematch and next match functionality. We also want to, excuse me, we also want to uh, move some of the logic that we put there in uh, into its own view. At the moment, we're using uh, Angular five, Angular, the new Angular. I think it's up to six now. We we uh, have put all of the all the logic onto one route. And the lobby route, and really we would like the lobby just to be for matching players together and then the play area route for uh, for playing the games. So we need to do something about that. That's going to be one of the things that we're going to tackle today. Um, right code to handle complete sessions. Yes, yes. We also need to do this as well. Whilst the game does work, it is functional. It matches up the players and it uh, takes an answer and then says who's won. Uh, there's a lot of gaps in our code, so we need to write code to handle completed sessions. Um, what happens when, when the session's over? Does the... Uh... Let's go, he's back! <laughs> Thanks, Alec Jones! <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, want, we need to write code to uh, handle when the player's game is over, so they can either rematch or replay, um, and just basically report back what the other players move was and all that kind of stuff, so that's going to be definitely what we do today, which I'm going to drag it out in progress. A small one here as well is to update the UI to say registering with server for user who hasn't who's, has contacted server for a match, but the server hasn't replied yet. So basically, uh, at the minute we say that the, the user is making a match, when that's not strictly true, um, basically we just need to step in between two uh, to let the user know that, um, that they're trying, that the server is trying to establish a match with them, but not say that they've already matched. So it's also going in there. Improve client-server messaging. Implement an event for the server for when the server has successfully added player to the list of unmatched players, so that the client's UI can show when user is connecting to server and when the server has begun to look for. A matching player. So that just goes along with the uh, the UI stuff there that we just mentioned. Um, build play area. Okay, so should include visually representing player 1 and player 2's moves. Should handle win, lose, draw results. Should give use input to select rock, paper, scissors via icons and keyboard input. I'm not going to drag that one over yet, but it's probably going to be done. Lobby UI, main UI, and yeah, so implement mechanism to keep track of paired players. Yeah, we're going to give a reference by when users make move, quit session, request a rematch. Yep, that's going in. That's pretty good. So before we get underway with the writing some of the new features, um, there's a few things I've done during the uh, first stream that we did there uh, last week. Um, so first thing I've done is I've made the project fully de debuggable now from the uh, server side and the client side. So what we can do now 
is if we're running an instance of the of the app, we can probably debug it. It'll spawn in a browser session. Let me just uh, pop the developer tools. Now we can, because of Webpack, we can we can uh, debug. So let's say we go into the main menu. Well, these are my uh, non source mapped ones. Okay, so. Ah, here we go. Yeah, so lobby components are. There ah, we go. Um, if I just breakpoint there. See, it hits the breakpoint, so now we can do debugging in the front end. That was a major faux pas of mine there, uh, not setting up. Um, Debugging for the front end and the back end. So in the back end as well, uh, if I just kill this instance of server and debug the server, now what we can do is we can go into the uh, development part of the project, the uncompiled version of the project, and there's been source maps generated. So we can, if there weren't any problems like we did in the last stream, I don't have to <laughs> just guess uh, what the problem is. I can actually uh, stick a breakpoint in there. So. Uh, if we just go to the matchmaker service and we'll just put a breakpoint in connect there and go back to our uh, client again. We still got an instance of that running. Yeah, so if I type in a man in there. See in Visual Studio Code, it's picked the breakpoint up, so now we can do all sorts of analysis and we can figure out what might be going wrong if there's, a, if there's an issue with the code. So just getting that out of the way, that was just a little bit of housekeeping. And okay, let's look at my list. I have a plan. <laughs> I didn't have a very good plan last time, but this time I have the best plan. Okay, so yeah, remove some unused files, that's not very interesting. Oh, this is a good one, yep. So now what I've done is I've installed the Prettier extension in Visual Studio Code. So now, uh, basically all the uh, formatting will be done automatically. So if I do some like bad indentation or something like that, uh, when I save, oh, well it would help if I had it installed on this machine. Bear with me two seconds. Yeah, I was testing out Prettier um, over the uh, over the weekend, and I installed it on the machine when I was uh, trying to use this project, but I didn't uh, actually install it on this computer. But basically, it's uh, an opinionated um, format, and it just means that when we're going through the code, it will it will uh, format the code uh, to a nice standard, and it should look really good on the screen. Um, indentation should be good. Um, uh, while well, that's installed, we can get on with it. Okay, so if you weren't here for the last stream, uh, this basically consists of a Angular TypeScript app on the front end. And oh, here we go, we got some messages. Yes, in Visual Studio Code, you can run an inline uh, terminal. I just thought it might be easier to do this than have separate windows just for the, for the sake of the stream since you've only. You kind of only restricted to one screen, so um, that's what's going on there. Um, I've got, yeah, basically server and client on each screen. And we can also see debug output as well, if we have the, the debugger on. So it's all pretty handy. Um, so yeah, if you were in the last stream, this is basically a TypeScript Angular uh, project. And using WebSockets, uh, and on the back end it is TypeScript and... It uses a socket IO. So basically, uh, we're using socket IO to talk between the client and server, and basically, you can match up one player with another, and then they can do rock, paper, scissors, no matter where they are in the world. <laughs> they are geographically unrestricted, the ones that can connect to the internet. Um, so, yeah, the uh, server consists of the sort of meat potatoes is that we have a matchmaker service which pairs the players up using web sockets and then initiate sessions. And then we also have our decision maker service, which 
looks at the decision that looks at the moves that were submitted by player one and player two and decides whether they uh, have won, lost or drawn and then delegates back to the matchmaker service to let the let the user know that they've either lost one or won a draw. So um, just demonstrating that as well. Here is our client. So we say mic one here. Oh, hit the breakpoint. Of course we did. And then we go to mic two here. And you see they've been matched together now. So that was using WebSockets. I hit rock there and hit paper there. You see? Paper one and rock lost. But at the moment there is a fatal bug in this, and that is that you can change your answer. <laughs> Which is a little bit of a flaw, so we're gonna to have to resolve that. I think that's probably the first thing we're going to do. So we need to come up with some way to end sessions and uh, to basically just yeah, basically end sessions. So Bring the code up again. I'm going to switch to non-webcam mode as well, so so I'm not in the way of the uh, console output. There we go. Okay, so yeah, drag that one in. Okay, let's get on with it. Please do let me know if uh, the sounds uh, bad or. If uh, the background music's drowning everything out, or anything like that, I'm happy to adjust that. No problem at all. Okay, so. Yeah, previously we implemented the uh, sessions as an array. And I don't know whether we should use a map instead. I suppose we could do a lookup based on the players that are inside the session and then remove it from the array that way. We could make a, a key out of the uh, user's socket IDs and then yeah let's do that. That's what I think I'm going to do. So basically we need to be able to clean up after ourselves with the uh, sessions that we have here for a game session so this is matching players and on and submitted so yeah at this point here we're trying to um, kind of get the uh, decision that the players uh, get the decision on whether the uh, players lost one or drew and I think at this point we need to terminate the session and um, right after the user gets uh, their uh, answer back. So, so if play sessions, player move submitted. Yeah, because we've uh, extracted that from the array up here. So yeah, what we've done is we've done a filter to try and get that session. Um, what we want to do now is delete that session from the array um, after the decision's been submitted. So, for me at this point, we're going to just. So let me see. Um, move session from list of sessions. do is I'm just going to remove the item from the array at a given index. So what we can do is we can say session index equals This dot sessions dot index of play session zero. And when we have that index, that means we can then remove that session from the array. So 
stick them inside right you can say just got sessions just slice Yeah, I just need to remember whether it's uh will this return a new array or is it will it work on the existing array? Return the delete elements, okay, so that's good. Yeah, so what we need to do here is specify the index, so our session index. And we only want to remove y elements, so there we go. So what that that should mean now is that the uh player when they, uh, basically they, they, the session that was uh, previously created to match player one and player two, we're now removing that from the array, so it no longer exists, and now the user can initiate a new, a new game. So I think from there, from the back end perspective, from server side, that's probably enough uh, maintenance to start uh, doing everything on the front end to, oh, got a message there. What's the best program to make an Android app? Um, I believe a lot of people use Android Studio, which is a modified version of is a modified version of Clips that gives you all of the integrated. Uh, well, it's an IDE basically, integrated development environment, and it gives you all of the uh, tools to debug your Android apps, and you can uh, target different versions of Android um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I haven't done a lot of Android development, but uh, that's probably the way to go if you're going to be writing something fairly vanilla. Um, I mean, there are other, are other options as well. I uh, once used a library called uh, libgdx, and it was a game development library. That would... Uh, I have no idea what to do. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, it can be a little bit uh, confusing at first. Um, but there are lots and lots of tutorials on the internet. Uh, just... I mean, what's your uh, programming experience level? Do you know any programming, or do you... Uh, that's a, I guess that's the biggest question. Because you're probably going to need to learn Java if you're doing uh, Android development, unless you find some other kind of uh, uh, library. Uh, I'm a little bit busy with my own app at the moment on here, um, but if, if you, hopefully you'll learn something from uh, this. So. Hopefully that'll, that'll help. <laughs> um, I'm not currently uh, looking to do any other projects, so, but I uh, hope it goes well. Okay, so we've uh, removed our session on the server side. <laughs> Dating app, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> well, this is a uh, this is use web sockets and it does do um, matching, so you might learn a little bit from the uh, algorithms used here. Feel free to check the uh, project out on GitHub as well. Um, I'm going to post a link to that now. And maybe you could have a read through the code and you can see how the uh, web sockets match people together. So, very original name. <laughs> But yeah, I would say the stream's still quite appropriate for uh, for what you're doing there. <laughs> Just remember to keep your PG in the, th in the chat. <laughs> or relatively PG. Okay, so as I was saying, if we go to the uh, front end now, and what we do is we tell the player that they, uh, their answer's been sub submitted and that uh, a match has been made. So, when we did this, let's go to our lobby. How much develop did the developers cost? I mean, it varies. I mean, it's a full time job, right? So, we're talking like salary. <laughs> um, it depends on the uh, on skill level, but. I mean, you could find somebody uh, on like a freelancer site, I guess, but normally developers kind of carry quite a high price if they're doing contract work, especially high. It's a lucrative profession to get into, though. That's on the other side, on the other hand. So, 
Okay, so... Oh, well... <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, you know, just keep just keep learning. Keep learning. Learn some Java. Learn the, the libraries. Learn the development environment. I started programming when I was... Well, I was about 14, so... Don't let that stop you. Um, there's everything you need on the internet, really, to, to learn, so... Okay, so we're in our lobby here, and at the minute we do actually um, we do actually update the UI based on the decision that was made in the in the game. So, so here we have a a listener. It's called a what's it called again? Observable. We have an observable. They don't show you what's relevant to what you want. What do you mean exactly? What um, uh, what would you like to see that would be relevant? Um, feel free to make suggestions. I can always, you know, think about it. I'm, I'm still learning the ropes of this as well. This is my uh, second stream, so I'm still refining things. Okay, so we have our observable here, and it's basically from our uh, service. We have a, a socket service here. We send an event from uh, Socket IO each time uh, a match decision has been made, and and here we uh, on any kind of a uh, match decision that gets made, we then update that in the front end in the in the UI rather. So it's quite simple at the moment. It just uses what's essentially a switch statement, but in Angular it's. You know, it's just like a bunch of ng ifs they're called. And if the number's equal to zero, it's one. If it's one, then you lost, and if it's two, you drew. Okay, so yeah, um, I mean, if the project was open source, then you could use, definitely use that. There's definitely things on the internet that are open source on uh, GitHub and. Various places. I suspect that that isn't um, open source, but there'll be many people who'll have written tutorials and um, and done uh, demos and uh, introductions to program that probably use that kind of uh, application as a uh, as kind of a reference, like kind of as a an idea. So at the minute, I'm doing a demo for a, a rock paper scissors game, and uh, well, I, I didn't think it was open source, but this is a rock paper scissors game, and it's it uses matchmaking technology, so with left sockets, so you know there is something to learn. Um, you just got to kind of pick, pick parts out from uh, tutorials and kind of then sometimes create some of your own solutions as well. Uh, come with your own ideas, write it out, try and figure out what you're going to build. So just be patient <laughs> and and get and, and like you know do it now because um, because you know you have all the time in the world when you're uh, when you. 16. Uh, so it's a lot better to work on projects now while you have the time. Uh, when you get to work, obviously you're um, working eight hours a day um, and you only really have the weekends for free time. So, <laughs> And I'm spending my free time, which is great, it's good fun um, doing this, so <laughs> um, doing programming. And so, yeah. Okay, so obviously this isn't very sophisticated. Um, what we want to do is say when a match decision has been reached, we want to tell the player that now they can either rematch or start a new game. So, in its simplest terms, we're basically just resetting the state of this uh, page. And what that means is we're going to create a button there's gonna I think there's gonna be a particular stream where I go through and do the uh, UI I uh, what I'd actually really like to do for that is get a uh, arm and a mount for my uh, webcam so that I can draw out the UI and we can all have a look at it and then we can then implement it piece by piece but uh, for this uh, stream it'll probably mostly just clean up of the existing code and uh, just adding a few bits of 
common sense functionality, so. Okay, so we're creating our button and we're gonna say rematch. Oh, should we uh, play again? And in Angular, we do a, a on click event, or a click event rather. So anything with a circular brackets in Angular is a event. So on click, we're going to call it going to be play new game or re play new match or restart match. Mm. Um, Start you game. Ah, oh, that extension will be done now. I don't need one second. Let's reload the ID. So now, one thing you'll notice when I'm uh, typing. If I enable it in right, so format on save is true. This is just a, a IDE set now I want to add to Visual Studio Code to make the code uh, format itself. So, uh, there we go, it's doing it now. Excellent. So, what we're going to do now is take our start new game function and implement it. Yep, there we go. See, pretty is doing <laughs> doing the formatting for me. I mean, every time I hit save, so um, just means that the code's going to be a lot neater and more readable without even having having to think about it. So that's great. Okay, so we're basically trying to initiate the like the the beginning state of the game again. So um, the username remains the same because it's just a rematch. Um, the opponent will be null. Submitted. Yep, name has been submitted. So yeah, basically we want to keep uh, all the stuff that's relevant to the user and uh, the same, but we want to remove the match decision. So yeah, by doing that, that will update the UI and we'll be able to uh, request another request another game. So. Oh, I've uh, noticed my uh, terminal windows are closed now. Let's just uh, sort that out. Okay, so we'll wait this one for the server. CD server. So what we're doing here is we're just going to... Uh, run the app. So we're going to do ourselves a build, npm run build. And we're going to just ng serve the client. This can uh, take a little while sometimes. So yeah, what we're basically going to do is we're just setting all this back to null. So match decision won't show anymore. Um, clicking this will start the new game and then basically this will disappear as well because there won't be an opponent and it'll all go back to the way, way it was uh, at the stage where the player was unmatched with another player. Okay so that server started, our server's been built rather, now we just need an npm start. 
and uh, Angular takes ages to start up the development server. Absolutely ages. There we go. It's quite good though because uh, the development server will update every time any changes are made. So um, even though there was a little bit of an initial slowdown, at least you don't have to restart it and do a rebuild like you do with my uh, server setup. Okay, so I see it's uh, save it. It's uh, recompile and build. Okay, so show the app again and refresh. So what I hope will happen is, I'll put my name in, Mike, I'm going to say Mike1 here, <laughs> that's actually showing still already, um, I'll need to do something about that. So, Mike1 and Mike2, we've been matched, so I'm going to go for rock, I'm going to go for paper, oh we won, okay, so when we play again, yep, yeah, see that's now made so that all that UI disappears. Say that you can't make the app at all. Hmm. Well, this is a Node app. Uh, the back end is anyway, and the front end is Angular, so you will need to have Node installed. And you just need to do npm, well, no, install Node and then npm install in the root directory of uh, the server and, and the client. So then you should be able to uh, start up the app. I'll uh, add instructions to the README probably after this stream. Um, like I'm trying to do more and more housekeeping so that uh, you know people can actually use, you know, get, can actually use this and uh, make their own version of it. They can fork it and you know get something out of this. So it's good. You probably could get somebody to do it for you, but what would you learn if you did that? Okay, so one thing we need to do is we need to have some logic to distinguish between the first uh, game and the uh, preceding games. So we need to do an ngif here. And what we need to do is say if name submitted. saying if not name submitted oh rather if name submitted my bad yeah so we basically want the button to show if the users already submitted their name and they haven't got an active an active session and so the name must be submitted but they also must have an opponent so name submitted. So yeah, uh, yeah. So basically, it's a state where they haven't got an active game. They have got their name registered, and they don't have an opponent. So you know, we could actually turn this into a getter. That might be a better way of doing this. So we'll say. Ng if can play new game. And then what we can do is we can implement a getter here. Rather than implement all the uh, logic in the uh, in the template, we can uh, put it in the component implementation of the component instead. Because then, if it was a more complex uh, 
bit of logic we could then put it into a service. Uh, so it's all just about, you know, uh, keeping things under control and managed. It's a lot easier to change JavaScript in a in a JavaScript class or a TypeScript class uh, than it is to modify templates. I think it's also easier to debug them as well because you can put breakpoints in there. You can put breakpoints in a uh, in a class, but it's a lot harder to debug uh, Angular templates. Um, okay, so turn this dot. Let's so say start opponent equal to null, and this dot uh, name submitted, and. We also want, so the players, the player has a name, they don't have an opponent, and they don't have, they have a match decision. There we go. See how pretty it just uh, reformatted that all for us? So everything's nice and nice and neat and, and nice and vertical, so it's easier to scan when you're uh, going through the code. I really do like this uh, extension. Um, this takes all the labour out of uh, out of writing your code, as, or like reading your code and reformatting your code. Okay, so now we have that. We can go back to code. So yeah, now what we'll do is we're saying if can play a new game, then it'll show the button, but otherwise it won't. So. So then the UI shows, select a, you lost. But that doesn't show, so I've clearly made some kind of logic error. <laughs> uh, can't play a new game. Let's see if there's any errors in the console as well. seem to be any errors. It's not going to get any, any answer back from the server now though. Yeah, so at least that's work, that works now. Um, previously it would constantly update the uh, player's moves because we were still persisting all the sessions uh, on the server and not cleaning up after ourselves, so now at least it doesn't void the player's uh, move and say that they won when they uh, lost before. So that's, that's progress I guess. Okay, so, what have I done here? If player can play new game, and that's implemented as, turn this dot opponent is equal to null. Oh, <laughs> that's what it is. I, uh, I don't clear that until, yeah, I got that completely wrong. <laughs> happens when I'm uh, programming on live stream. <laughs> okay, so yeah, of course, um, you only want to see the button if um, a match decision has been made, because that means that uh, a match has already happened, which means that the player can then choose to play another match. So what the button does is it clears the match decision, it clears the opponent, and keeps the uh, player's username the same, and that way they can play another game. So. So, just trigger this. So you see now we don't see the replay button initially. Let's put mic one in there. We put mic two in there. Oh, let's get my breakpoints on. Okay, so mic two has been matched with mic one, and mic one has been matched with mic two. Now, if mic one selects rock, and mic two selects scissors, you now get the play again button. See here? Same here as well. So we play again. It's all been cleared. And we clear here. And that's cleared everything up again. One thing it hasn't done is uh, 
contacted the matchmaker server and requested for another game so what we need to do there is say start new game and say this dot register player yeah we want to register the player so and then this is this dot Maybe we don't store that in. Ah, this dot username. Of course we do. Okay. So, this dot username. And that way it allows us to talk again to the server and start up another game. So. So this time, we're going to initiate a. Any messages there? No. We're going to initiate another game with Mike 1 and with a Mike 2. And you see there they've been matched together by the server. And Mike 1, my choices. And then when we play again, we're re registered with the server. So those two are getting matched again. And then see, it uh, lets you play another game. So, so that's pretty neat. Okay, UX. I think people like it, it was just an automatic play again and there was just an exit game button for when people are done. Right, that's kind of cool, that's a cool idea actually. I um, guess we could do that. So obviously we would just take the old start your game button and instead of doing that we would just add to the logic that when the player got a new... The only thing about that is that currently this will uh, hide their uh, last the game result. So um, at the minute it allows them to keep it until until they uh, move on to the next game. So, so yes, that might be quite good um, if they automatically played again. I suppose we could actually... Oh, I'll tell you what we could do. Yeah, let's do this, right? Let's have a list of wins and losses, and then it'll automatically try and rematch them with another game, another player. But it'll keep a tally of their um, of their uh, of their wins and losers. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do what um, Alec Jones says in the, in the chat. Let's not have a button for this, and let's do it automatically just for fun. So. So what we do there instead is on receipt of a match decision. We say start new game. And at the moment match decision is just an integer. I, I do have um, sort of plans to make this a bit more sophisticated and instead of returning just an integer value of 0, 1 or 2 to signify victory, loss or uh, draw, I also want to return the other users, well actually I do actually have the other users uh, username already, but just sort of information like the move that the other player made, um, because at the minute it's kind of, you lost and you don't actually know why you lost, so I do need to do that, but for now what we can do is we can write a tally of this dot results will say um, past match results is equal to an array and what we can do is we can store them and print them and now we can say oh well this person beat you <laughs> so we'll say start new game and then this dot Past match results. Very good suggestion, Alec Jones. <laughs> Dot push. It's complaining about that because I didn't declare it yet. 
I only assigned it. So in TypeScript, when you're writing uh, class uh, members, you do have to declare them as well as uh, as well as define them. I may uh, make that strongly typed and using it instead of using it any, but uh, for now we'll do this. So, um, one thing that uh, Prettier does that the uh, in general uh, TS or it would be uh, TS lint disagrees with is they're uh, using double quotes, and I uh, I also disagree with that. So I might have to find out whether I can override that rule because we don't like underline red underlined things. It just makes everything messy. Okay, so we're going to start game, we're going to add results here. So what I'm thinking is, we say um, play name, and we just say it's this dot. I know it's kind of obvious that it's obviously that player, but we'll, we'll put it in here as well anyway, so because in the future we may put this into some kind of persistent table or into local storage or something, so um, this dot username, and then we'll say prominent this dot opponent and then we'll say match results match decision and what we're going to do now is we're going to output this as a list and it's going to show all the wins, losers and draws so I'll just split this into side view here so I can have the template open and this and we can reference it. So we're going to repurpose this uh, list we've got here that I uh, don't actually use at the moment so we've got to use the uh, let syntax in Angular so let I've forgotten it <laughs> let message and messages so it would be let Results. Result of past match results. And I'm thinking what we do is we say result dot username. Versus result dot opponent and then see I'm just thinking the way we want to do this because we always want to say that if the loser won, loser won, and the other guy lost. So I'm think, saying, yeah, I think we can, yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say win, lose, draw, in you know, username versus opponent, like that. So what we're going to do is we need to do a little bit of conditional, conditional templating. <laughs> so result versus yeah result dot username versus result dot opponent and actually we could create a function for this so uh, we could say span and then we could say get match results I put result dot decision. Yeah, that's right. So what we do is take the match decision Feel free to talk in the chat as well. Um, I'm uh, keeping my eye on it while I'm programming. It's not a distraction. <laughs> it's all fine. Hmm. 
So is everybody having a nice Sunday night? I'll put my uh, camera on. Hey. Is everybody having a good Sunday night? Um, it's probably still afternoon in some places, but it's uh, Sunday night in uh, the UK. And it is unseasonable. well, I say unseasonably, it's summer, right? But it's incredibly hot at the moment. Um, not as hot as last week, but uh, still pretty darn hot. So hopefully everybody's got nice weather where they are. I know we've got Canadian in the audience, so um, hopefully the weather's good there too. I uh, just booked my uh, holiday, uh, some holiday to Barcelona as well, so I've got my uh, favourite Barcelona t-shirt on, which says, I'm only here for the beer. <laughs> I ain't no beer in this house at the moment, so I'm going to be disappointed. Um, but yeah, hopefully everybody's having a good Sunday night, um, and just learning a little something. Okay, so, get our match result. Oh, uh, I already used that. Yep, that's already a thing. Let's not, let's not call it that. Get, get previous. Excuse me. Get previous result. I need to uh, get a thesaurus more like. <laughs> okay, so get previous result. Oh, actually, get result type from match result. Because we're just getting an integer value back, so we can convert that integer value into, uh, into a string, so. And that could be of type match result, so result. Because we have a I believe we have a match result for this. Game outcomes. Okay, it's got a game outcome. And we can just do a switch on it. So, switch our results. Case, game outcomes dot. Ah, oh, there you go, see? It's an enumeration. So, we can just return like a, a string value for this. So if it was a draw, call it a draw. I still don't agree with uh, double quotes. See, neither does the S-Lint. T-S-Lint, rather. Normally we would use break state breaks in um, a case statement, but given that we return the value, we don't need to. Um, win. Is win. And draw. Okay. Cool, okay, so what we can do with that is, yeah, so it should be output in a string there, so, uh, yeah, cool. Let's see if it worked. So, start again. We'll say Mike1. Actually, we'll say Mike, and we'll come up with another person's name. Let's say John. So they're matched together, and Sean makes his move, Mike makes his move, they've lost. Oh, <laughs> okay. So they're nearly there. That's a few things aren't quite working right as I expected there. Versus John. What did I do wrong? Versus Mike win. <laughs> okay. Now that's interesting. Why is it only showing up on one of the player's screens? Maybe this is... Hmm. So result I use name. Oh, result dot player name. And we've got zero, one, and two. Oh, that's why. That's bad copy paste. Rule number one of programming: never trust your copy pasting. 
it, uh, it's probably gonna go wrong. <laughs> okay, so we've got win, lose, and draw conditions there. Um, so uh, let's go back to here. So we've got player one and player two. Let's call this guy Mike, and let's call this person James. Why not? And then we match together. I'm going to decide to go for rock, and the other person's going to do paper. One thing we didn't see is, oh yeah, well we did see it in the list, is that uh, James v Mike won. And they've been immediately rematched together because when uh, when they uh, when the game ended, uh, we've had some logic so that it just starts a new game for them again. So, And they've just been immediately matched with each other again. So obviously we've had more than one player, or more than two players, uh, it would be a bit more exciting, you need to get more variety. So we can we can do that. Let's say I make a third player. And we'll call this third player Jane. So Jane's looking for a player to play with. Where Mike and Mike and John are still working on the same game. So um Mike goes for rock. And James goes for Rock as well. And they draw. So Jane's still waiting for a player. Um, oh. Let's say that... Um, Mike leaves. And... John restarts. John's then matched with uh, Jane. And Jane's matched with John. So... Hmm... Yeah, it's a bit of an odd dilemma because they got matched together because they're at the top of the list. So maybe we could make it so that it picks from the bottom of the list so that you get a little bit more... You end up with a different player, hopefully, rather than the player you just played with. I suppose... I don't know. Ah, thanks, Alec Jones. Bob Ross at the moat there, so I'm going to paint some happy little code. Remember, there aren't any mistakes, there are only happy accidents. Okay, so... There are lots of ways we can improve this. Um, uh, so, let's go back to our project board and see what what's left to do. Here we go. So, so write code to handle complete sessions, remove delete sessions from list, report back to clients when sessions have ended. Um, I think we've almost pretty much done that. We haven't done it where the user quits, that's the only the only thing. So what we need to do is implement some logic where if the user leaves, it needs to tell the other the other player that they, uh, they're no longer in there and then restart the match for them. So let's do that now. Okay, so... There's just so many things you can add to this as well now that we've got like a bit of a, a bit of a baseline. Like it works, so <laughs> and uh, like I said you can more than happy to check out this project on GitHub. It's on my uh, program in progress GitHub uh, uh, repo uh, collection. So it's MDS Rock Paper Scissors. It's in the chat there. Um, Because I'm sure that if you want to uh, play along at home, feel free to fire it up and npm install it and give it a go. So, uh, I'll, I'll probably make a small video on that, show you how it's set up, um, and put it in. It's just like a short clip for next time. So it was amazing. Oh, thank you very much, AM developer. Nice to have you here as well. Okay, so we're going back to our uh, socket I/O logic in the uh, server, and what we need to do is, when a player leaves, uh, i.e., they uh, hang up their uh, socket, uh, we need to tell the server to tell the remaining player that they uh, the other players left. So the way we're going to do that is, yep. Yeah, so we'll review the original code, and the original code is uh, that. I believe it's crypto mining soft. It's not. <laughs> it's a game. 
just a very simple game. Use web sockets. Okay, so what we're doing is we're removing the player from the list of registered players. But what we need to do before we do that is do a match on the sessions. So we can say leave and play session equals this dot sessions dot filter and then we want to say session going into an arrow function and then we're just going to return the filter if if this yes yeah, so session what am I using on the front end bravos Zulu Union. Uh, I'm using Angular, uh, sort of Angular. I think this is Angular 5 at the moment, but it's that kind of the new Angular, like it's not uh, legacy Angular. Um, it's basically the default for Angular is TypeScript as well in the new version, so it's using TypeScript. Angular, socket ILO library, and then I'm just using all the like uh, standard. Uh, standard. Uh, what are they called again? Most of the functions in the, the like ES6 functions, so uh, you know, like array filter and that kind of stuff. I'm um, I'm also using RxJS because that comes along with uh, that comes along with uh, Angular when you use the Angular CLI to build um, modern Angular apps. Uh, so we're using that to listen up when there's changes on when when, there's, when when a web socket fires from the server or from another player or something like that um it listens in and then the observer observable layer is able to relay that information back to uh back to the uh, the component so and then from the component we can then do render something on the front end so what we got here so angular is the best and i guess it is gta 6 You don't know yet, but I think this is the next Fortnite. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you know what? If this if this small project inspires any of the people on this their stream to make the next Fortnite, then I've done my job seriously. So, um, you got to start somewhere. You really do. So, don't let anything hold you back. <laughs> make that next Fortnite. <laughs> And if you actually if you check out some of my uh, older projects on GitHub, I did actually write a few games in C++. It was just simple games. It was like a Pong clone that I did where it added some like randomness and stuff. Um, so you know, there's no reason why you can't make games if you're a web developer or vice versa. <laughs> Rock paper scissors equal to GTA six. You know, <laughs> spread the word. <laughs> from tiny acorns. <laughs> okay. So, um what's my what's my place there? Okay, so <laughs> Yeah, I know what we're doing again. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're just getting distracted by all the good banter in the chat, which is fine, I encourage it. I encourage it. <laughs> okay, so it's good to have a laugh. Yeah. It's, um, it's good to have a laugh there while programming. This is why I'm putting it doing the streams because although programming is incredibly fun, it does get a little bit like you kind of on your own, you're kind of just in your own head, and it's nice to share it with other people, you know? So I'm all for it. Okay, so TypeScript has triple equals and um, exclamation mark double equals up right yes it does um you can use double yeah yeah they are the same you can use double equals and um, um you know it's not equal but it also checks the i believe it does like a deep check it does like a check on the values and on the references so if the object is not the exact object um it's actually an es lint rule as well uh or, or ts lint as well if you don't do it the compiler complains um 
and you'll get loads of like red underline marks like I've got here. Um, I will amend this either, I'm either going to loosen the TS Lint rule or I'm going to change uh, Prettier to only use single quotes because I actually agree with a uh, TS Lint's rule. <laughs> Beer at Angular 5 equals success. It, it does indeed. It does indeed. I've only got a uh, Coke here at the moment, not just, you know, Coca Cola, not beer. Um, I don't have any beer in the house at the moment, so. <laughs> but, uh, I might have a beer on my next stream. Always makes things more fun. It does make the, uh, the old decision making process slow down a little bit, though. Um, I have a feeling it'll become more of a banter string um, when, uh, if I had a, a beer instead of a nice refreshing glass of cork. Anyway, so we got our uh, leave and play of sessions and we're looking through the list of sessions and finding the one where player one or a player is in there and another player is in the same session and that is the one that we know has been is the match session. And then what we can do is tell the other player that, oh, the person's left, and we can update the uh, front end so that they don't sit around waiting for the other player to make the move. So a leaving player session equals session player one dot mm, use username or socket. I keep, this is, I keep making the same decision every time. Do I use the socket ID or do I use do I use the username? Socket. Uh... Yeah, so we just want to retrieve the one where... Yeah, okay. Oh, we've got lots and lots of chat going on. Which is your favourite? Tesco, Sainsbury's, Waitrose, or Asda? Okay, I am a Sainsbury's kind of dude. I like Sainsbury's. The shop's nice and colourful and they always have what you want. But I have got nothing against Tesco or Asda. Although I did li live next to a very um, overpriced Tesco at one point and it was back in my student days. Actually I lived next to an overpriced Sainsbury's. It was you know, just a way to get money out of uh, students who didn't have much. <laughs> Uh, you know, they're all alright. Um, I, I use Sainsbury's personally. Who are they? Also, is everybody cool with music in the background? I found this service called uh, Pretzel that apparently lets you play sort of Twitch streaming friendly music. Um, so I've just left that on kind of quietly. Uh, feel free to say whether it's too loud or you don't like the music or, or whatever. So. Um, so it would make things a bit more interesting just when there's some, you know, sort of blind death spots in the stream. Because I am going to have to look at the code sometimes. Okay, so. It's where... This dot player's socket ID... Player1... Socket is equal to so session dot player one socket is equal to this player's socket ID or it's exactly the same thing but with player two. See, pretty is going to format this for us, so I don't have to spend lots of time. There you go. See, hit save and it just does it for you. It's really good. So what we're saying here is. If the session has this player in it, either as player one or player two, then retrieve that session. And then we're going to say if Length more than zero, that means we found a match. See how uh, pretty reformats that? It's really, really good. It just makes uh, programming so effortless. I'm, I'm not sponsored by Prettier. Just saying that, I just really like it. <laughs> you gotta have opinions on things, <laughs> especially when you're a developer. 
good practices and all. So if leave plane, leave plane sessions dot length is more than zero, that means that we can take the session meaning I uh, So leave playing session one. It would be useful to know if it was player one or player two, because then we could uh, send out tabs or spaces. At the minute, my ID set up for uh, two spaces, but I'm really not that bothered about it. I know this was a big thing on um, well, it's a big thing on the internet, and it's also a big thing on. Was it Silicon Valley? Um, but I really don't care as long as it looks consistent. Um, and I don't use your Marie Max. Um, I like IDs where you have uh, command palettes and that kind of stuff. So, you know, command palettes are excellent. It's, in my opinion, one of the best ways to uh, get like discover functionality in an IDE is a command palette because you can just hit a command and start typing in, in plain English what you want and you'll find it, and you'll also find the corresponding key command. So, that's my preference anyway. Um, some people are massive Emacs fans, which is fine, people are massive Vim fans, um, but it's just, I don't know. I just haven't sat down and like learned all the commands. VS Code is actually a text editor, but I would argue that it has ID-like features. Um, it's it's I mean it's like a Swiss Army knife of a of a text editor. Um, I've seen WebStorm. Um, we use IntelliJ at work, which is like the uh, the Java version of that, and you can also do all the JavaScript features in there. But it's a little bit less focused. It's a little bit less focused on web development. And I have tried WebStorm in its own as well. It's a very good uh, very good um, web ID. We'll call it a web ID. Um, that way <laughs> pleases everybody. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's super versatile Visual Studio Code as well. Um, I just think once you get used to the whatever macros or key commands that you know, even you've got the right the right uh, extensions in, I think uh, you know you can get anything to work really as long as it's a Notepad. Although uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently uh, they're, they're uh, starting to implement more developer-friendly features in the Windows Notepad. Um, my only question would be why. <laughs> I mean, it's just pointless, but uh, you know, good on Microsoft for doing that, I guess. Um, it was just 20 years too late. <laughs> okay, so mind you, you can't say anything. Like, this isn't like a Mac vs. PC thing, because um, text edit's terrible as well on Mac, so... <laughs> okay, so... Leave and play a session, don't play it. So yeah, what I was going to do is instead of just returning this here, maybe we could figure out whether it's player one or not. Oh, we can we can ask that ask, ask the object that so we can say if leaving player session at index one or index zero because zero based course raise a zero based in TypeScript like many other languages. Okay, so if uh, uh, dot player one dot socket is equal to this dot players oh we'll just say socket id yeah we know we've got a match so we can just use an if else here so and actually we want to well if we're inspecting the socket ID, we do. That's actually not correct. Uh, so we can either say, does, does a player equal another player, or does a player's socket ID equal another player socket ID? So I think what we're going to do is just simplify this. Oh, something happened. I can't see it. Uh, oh, it's a follow. Thank you very much, AM developer. <laughs> I do use two monitors, um, so on my left side I've got, I've actually switched this around um, recently, uh, so on my left side I've got my uh, OBS set up, and my own notes and everything, um, and chat as well, and then on my right side I've got all the stuff that I'm showing on on the screen, so um, yeah, I'm actually used to using two monitors, it works for actual, you know, I'd have like, 
ID on the left or right, and then I'd have like a browser open. So it's actually kind of uh, difficult having to switch between windows. I'm usually just I'm just used to moving my head backwards and forwards. So <laughs> so yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so and what we're going to do is we're going to match on socket ID. So we're saying here is if either of the um, either of the players have a matching socket ID, then we go here and we say if player one's socket ID matches the sessions player one, then send a message to player one. So we're going to say socket dot emit. And I just need to look at my other code because. <laughs> I don't write much socket IO logic, so I keep forgetting exactly how to do it. Oh, I see, right, okay. So it's connected players. So we've got our uh, connected sockets. And then we need to say socket so what we do is we tell them the other player so if we play two dot socket dot emit and save it because it's gonna help us with our indentation oh was it not like that for okay Okay, it's looking for an argument. So we've got to emit an event and then some data. So we'll say player quit. Yeah, we'll say player quit. Or play disconnected. Right, we don't actually need to send any data to be honest, so we'll just send this one one argument. And then we need to do the inverse for in the other situation so so what we're doing here is saying player one so just in review what we've done here is we've taken our list of their uh, sessions and we're filtering on them because if the player has a matching socket ID then that's the play that's the player session and for that player session we want to tell the other player in that session that the other person has quit so Leaving player session zero, player one is equal to socket ID. Then we tell, in our list of sockets, we tell player two, we tell player two that they their their opponent has, has, has disconnected. And then on the inverse of that, we tell player one. So let's put this all together. We'll, we'll do a build. That looks like it crashed hard. <laughs> yeah, try to uh, kill the session. Don't know why. I have to restart that. These things happen. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> it's all broken. There we go. Can I uh, kill this terminal session? There we go. Hopefully it won't have uh, blocked the uh, port that's running on. So npm run build. I'm just rebuilding the project because it doesn't have like an auto watch mode at the moment. Um, oh, there we go. No such. Uh, I'm able to find file. Oh, I know why. Because I have this set up as a mono repo, which means it's just one repo with a the front and the back end in the same project. So what I have to do is go to server folder and then, then I can execute my commands. Maybe I should have split it up into... Really? Third most popular? That's amazing. Um, well, I mean, I know it's a bit of a niche, uh, niche category, so uh, that's actually really, really great. So <laughs> thank you for telling me that. Uh, also, I invite anybody else who wants to get under the third best category of ever. <laughs> oh, that's so excellent. Anyway, let's get back to um, 
Let's get back to our, uh, our painting. I got some powder blue and some uh, Van Dyke brown. And I've just covered the uh, canvas in uh, a little bit of liquid white. Okay. And uh, just there, the, the thing had crashed, but like I said, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. So I'm going to run our build. So yeah, like I said, uh, with the server, we haven't got uh, a watch mode on this, so it, uh, we have to build it each time. It might be something I can improve on, put a watch mode on for, for the builds when things change. Um, but I'm just working just in the background. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, Bob Ross fever. <laughs> Love a bit of Bob Ross, me. <laughs> it's a very chill thing to have on the other screen um, when you're uh, programming. It's very relaxing. So. Also, you know what else is relaxing? Having another developer stream on while you do development. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to uh, start up our uh, server again. It's taken a little while. So one thing that we don't have is the front end functionality lended to take this event. So what we do is we take our player disconnected string here and we listen for it. And how we're going to listen for it, we're going to go to our socket service and we're going to register it. So, one player matched observable, turn user over. How does that, how does that even? Oh, I know how that works it's because you, you register with a, a component. So, we write out our uh, function to set up a listener on. Player, I say on opponent disconnected. And that's typed to an observable. Which, if I'm being honest, I took a while for me to get my head around these because they, uh, they work a little bit like uh, push broadcasts. So it's weird. I mean, I know about the observer pattern. Like, it's pretty simple. You know, you um, have some object, and you uh, subscribe to another object's events, and then that publisher then feeds back whenever there's an event. It's 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 an easy concept to get your head around, but using any kind of like push mechanism in web development, it still feels a little a little odd. We usually rely on things like callbacks and. Uh, and, and all sorts of stuff. And uh, one thing that's very prominent in most uh, web development projects is using uh, promises, or now we use a thing called async await, which is really good. Love async await. You can write code. Um, it looks like synchronous code, but it's actually doing a lot of asynchronous stuff. Um, highly recommend looking at that. I will do, I will do an async await uh, video one time because it is a really good uh, feature in TypeScript. And it's, it's also, I believe it's also in ES6 as well, so um, yeah, definitely going to do a, a stream on that at one point. I will write that down. Anyway, so an observable of any, and also welcome to the uh, welcome to the live stream. Uh, all these new people have joined, so good to have you. I hope you are having a really good Sunday, and hopefully this will entertain you a little bit. And you might even learn something along the way. So welcome. Okay, so we're just uh, painting some happy little code. God, people who've been here probably heard the Bob Ross jokes about like three times now. I'm sorry. But you gotta admit, he's pretty good. <laughs> okay, so. This dot socket dot on. And what we're doing is we're gonna use our web sockets to talk. Yeah, we've got. We're gonna listen for the player disconnected event. And on that event. We're going to take that record and rewind that record. Observer.next. So all we're doing is we're telling our uh, observing objects that we have a new piece of data from Socket.io. Um, and it'll tell our uh, matchmaking, or rather our, uh, our lobby component, that, uh, that there's another event that needs to be handled. So that can be relayed to the user in form of UI. So.
the thing is it doesn't actually pass anything in this, this one so I'm gonna not include that there I'm just gonna say next observer.next and spell observer right oh it's because I didn't provide it as an uh, argument oh I know I've, uh, I'm missing out there got to return the observable You just confused me. Oh, did it actually just do that for me? Oh, no, it didn't. So, yeah, when I keep hitting save, it's uh, reformatting my code. So, there are downsides and upsides. Okay. So, what we're saying is on play disconnected that we want our observer to feedback. So, now we can go back to our uh, lobby component. And what we can do is register with a socket service that we want to listen for events. So this dot socket service dot on player matched this dot opponent equals data dot opponent. Ah yeah, init IO connection. So here's where we can add all of our uh, observables. So we say this dot on player disconnected equals this dot socket service socket service dot on opponent disconnected dot subscribe and now we can add our uh, arrow function. is doing that again okay so yeah so we're adding our uh, event listener uh, which uses an observable so we can say private on point disconnected player disconnected and then what we're going to do is we're just going to tell the user well we're going to reset the play area and we're going to tell the user that the player disconnected so um so this let's start new game so we're going to do that and we're also just going to Just put some UI so that the uh, player disconnected. I'm just wondering how we can fit this in because now that we automatically we automatically restart the game. I th I'm thinking maybe we just need a way to represent um, represent in the UI that the player disconnected and that it was like a because it wasn't a draw or a win. It was just it was kind of like a avoided avoided session. So I think what I'm going to do. I'm going to call it forfeit and I'm going to add it to our list of uh, game outcomes. So, and we're going to call it forfeit.
I'm just updating the game outcomes to say. There we go. So basically we're going to say that the player forfeited if they disconnected. I'd like to see this actually in action, so I'm gonna put a breakpoint there. Let's see it actually do that. So we've got our uh, server running, we've got Webpack running client, and now we're going to debug it. So. We will debug the client. So if you want the uh, your uh, debug setup to be the same as mine, if you're uh, playing long at home, um, I've set up uh, launch.json, which should uh, do that for you. Okay, so now if we debug, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Mike is playing. And we're going to have another person here. What's going to happen? The debugger is going to get triggered when uh, I disconnect this player from this player. So we'll call this person John. So they're connected together. I'm going to now quit this. Uh, let's see. John disconnected, but he didn't tell. He didn't tell him that uh, he disconnected. So we might need to do a little bit more uh, work on that. Hmm. Did it crash? I think it crashed. <laughs> oh well. I must have done something wrong. Okay. Oh, do you actually do you work in an actual office or at home? I uh, work in an actual office. But um I have some op some options sometimes to work remotely. Um I like working remotely. This is, a, like I say, I've got an office set up here. Um, yeah, it would be nice to spend a little bit more time remote. Um, sometimes it helps you can concentrate a lot better sometimes. But uh, yeah, no, I work in an office, so I have to commute in every day. Okay, that didn't work, so. Hmm. Maybe I did have to pass the data as a parameter. Okay. So this is problem solving time. Why did that not work? <laughs> okay, so first things first, let's debug the server. So I'll go into our uh, matchmaker service and we'll look at this part of the code to find out whether we're actually matching sessions. Okay, so we're going to debug the server. One thing I will say is I am having a lot of trouble there uh, with uh, the integrated terminal tonight in, in Visual Studio Code. It doesn't seem to be very happy with terminating the uh, terminal sessions. Just keeps crashing. I just have to close it. <laughs> Which isn't very good. This would work fine in, um, in just git bash or terminal, depending on what terminal program you use. Right. Let's 
as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna do a rebuild just in case I forgot to do that before. Also, is everything nice and clear? Can everybody see the code on the screen? I should have asked that a little bit earlier. I know there's a t 10 second stream delay, so... Hopefully everything's legible. I've tried my best to optimise it with my uh, quite slow internet connection. Right, okay, so we're going to start this again. NPM start. Oh, but we want to we want to debug, so I'm gonna debug it. Debug server. Am I in the bath? I don't know how to take that. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I've never been to bath before, but I have had a bath. It's down south there, uh, bath, isn't it? So I am. Um, I live up north. Okay, so we got the debugger on, that's good. And what we're gonna do now is just gonna play the game and see what is wrong with it. Hopefully the event's being picked up and it's just something to do with my filter function. So we take, this shouldn't work because I haven't enabled ng serve again. So I need to do ng serve. Hopefully there's, hopefully there's no compiler stopping bugs there. North, okay. Have you ever been to Edinburgh? I have been to Edinburgh before, yeah. Oh, Edinburgh's awesome. Yeah, definitely recommend Edinburgh. I've been down the uh, the Royal Mile. I've been up Holyrood Hill. I've seen the uh, the uh, Parliament building from the outside. Edinburgh is awesome. Been to Glasgow as well. Um, it has a little bit of a reputation, but it's a very... Uh, yeah, it's got some cool stuff there. If you like uh, pub crawls and stuff like that, it's uh, some pretty pretty neat stuff there to go and see. Trying not to be completely silent. I'm just waiting for uh, the uh, build to build. Um, on the front end, so I can hammer the uh, hammer the app. So, so Mike, uh, John. Right, so I'm going to get John to quit now, and I should pick that up. I didn't though. Hmm. On disconnect. But surely, surely the, there'll be some output saying disconnected. Right. Yeah, there should be like somebody disconnected. Interesting. Okay, well, let's, let's try and figure this out. I can't get it right every time. This is where I find out that the bright points don't work or something like that at the moment. Oh, the server. Yeah, that wasn't on there. I think it was initially. Ah. Okay, it seemed it will hit the bright points now, so. And this is why I was uh, my my stream streams a little delayed because I was having some problems with uh, the breakpoints hitting. I spent quite a lot of time this week trying to get everything to debug properly. Okay, so they're matched. Ah, there we go. Right, so client is connected. Um, and I expect them to get into this if statement here at one point. So, oh, my flux fill is coming on again. I turn that off. There 
we go. Okay, so we got in there. All right, then we need to make sure this comparison function works correctly. Breakpoints keep coming off. There we go. Oh no, that's not what I want. Hmm. Why is it not letting me put a breakpoint down? I'm having the same old problems I had with a. Is it unreachable code, maybe? I did have this problem before. Oh, by the way, I have to give big thanks to you. I know I love Visual Studio Code a lot more than Atom. This, the integrated terminal is so nice. It is. Um, I had a few crashes, unfortunately, on this stream. But uh, yeah, it's a really good tool there, is uh, Visual Studio Code. They've um, done an amazing job on it. Um, it's my uh, it's my go to. It's my daily driver IDE. No doubt about that. Um, I remember liking it almost immediately because it took all the good things from Adam and uh, from Sublime and uh, just streamlined them, made it made it better. There's, there's so many good shortcuts to learn. But the thing is, is that if somebody, if I personally, I can memorize shortcuts, but it's all about discovering where those short what those shortcut, shortcuts are. And um, having a way to use like English, just type in what you want, and then learn the shortcut. It's just so much better rather than having to sift through deeply nested menus or um, go into a manual and just memorizing the c commands. I memorize commands a lot easier when I, I actually use them. So, so yeah, definitely, yeah, it's a good idea. Plus, you can change the theme, which is really good. Like all you have to do is go. Up Depending on which uh, operating system you're on, you can do Control, Command, yeah, Control Shift and P. Preferences, color theme, and you can just change it to whatever you want. It's really good. I like uh, Visual Studio's Dark Plus though. It gives me the contrast that I, I, I like best. So anyway, anyway, let's debug this. So, um, so I'm having some problems with the breakpoints, which is very annoying. But it is letting me ah. Uh, Ah, <laughs> do you know what it is? Mike's done a stupid. <laughs> I've gone and wrapped all the logic in the filter function. Uh, when what I want to do is just do the filter and then do the, like carry out the logic to d disconnect the player. So what I need to do is take this uh, brace and uh, bracket and move it. So that needs to go here. And then Pretty is going to reformat for us. That's what the, where the bug is, and that's why we couldn't uh, break point in it. See, sometimes it tells like sometimes it's not immediately obvious, but the IDE and Source Maps is trying to help you out by saying this is an unreachable piece of code. So let's try that again. Oh, we need to do a rebuild as well because it doesn't automatically rebuild. So npm run build. Uh, welcome to the stream. Um, I know we've got uh, seven viewers at the moment. Um, I'm just building a rock paper scissors app with a TypeScript, Node, uh, Angular, and WebSockets. Okay, so at the minute we're in the debugging stage where I uh, am implementing a feature that will tell the other user that the other player is disconnected. Um, but there's a bug in it, so I'm just trying to figure out what that bug is. So I'm trying to be quite vocal with this so that people can sort of play along um, at home and uh, hopefully you'll pick something up, pick up some debugging skills along the way. So I can now put that breakpoint down. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work because their uh, source maps can be a bit iffy sometimes, but um, if we go ahead and play play that now, I should be able to get there if this is working correctly. What we can do is the client's still running happily there, so... We'll refresh this, start up another instance, and we'll do Mike and John. And they're connected to each other, and then what we're going to do is going to disconnect this guy here. And we've hit the breakpoint, and we have a match session. So I think this is going to work. 
I hope. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look. Here we go. Here we go. Mike versus John. Forfeit. Opponent disconnected. So it works now. Whee! One more time for uh, clarity. So does that mean that the players matches re replayed? So John. And you can see here they've um Isn't that interesting? Ah. It could be because we're not terminating the session when the player disconnects, which we need to do. So, yeah, because the, the, yeah, it won't have created a new session, even though the session's been voided. So, like, say if a uh, Oh, oh, it's because we hit breakpoint as well. I can't actually execute the code if the breakpoint's been hit. Bob Ross would be so proud. <laughs> yeah. We can all aspire to be like as good as the master. You'd be looking up at us uh, in a happy little cloud right now. Isn't like Bob Ross like the patron saint of Twitch anyway? That's like he is to me anyway. <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, it's because the debug is off. <laughs> yeah. So now that we know that's that's fixed, I think uh, we can run that again. npm start. See what's happening there is it can't connect to the server, so that might be another thing that we need to do. One point is add. There we go. It's actually this is the great thing about WebSockets is they just sort of they'll keep trying if they need to connect to a server. That, um, and if a server goes down, the uh, client will still broadcast. So once they uh, once the server's back up again, it just sorts itself out. Okay, so now we're matching again. Let's go to select rock and then close the session. Disconnected. So what we can do now is we can go back and start with John. And we matched again and we're ready to play. Hmm, but there does appear to be a problem here. They've been matched, but they're not playing. Not playing with each other. Hmm. I wonder if it's if I change the name. Maybe there's some kind of match on username. So and Mike and John. Is it crash? Oh, the server's crashing. That's what it is. There's something there. It doesn't like. Ah, cannot read property. Emit of undefined. So what it's trying to say is, the player isn't connected. So maybe we're actually uh, contacting player two and we should be contacting player one and vice versa. Right, well we need to debug this. Just gonna put a manual breakpoint in there but we don't need to. Okay, that's fine. Let's uh, debug this. You've heard me say that a few times. <laughs> okay, so... Hmm... How, oh, it, it detected the disconnected sessions, that's what it was. Okay, so we have the length of one. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, let's find out what this is that it's trying to say. I'd like some more information if possible. The star I was undefined. It's nah. Oh, you know what? I bet I've uh, wrote this out wrong. This dot io dot sockets dot connected. Hmm. This might be just a, a, a scope thing. It might actually exist. Oh, I know what it is. It, it must be losing scope. Am I doing an arrow function there? Yeah, it should be. But when I'm referring to this, it's not referring to... It thinks this is a socket. Interesting. Okay, I'm a little bit perplexed at the moment. I think it's something to do with scope. But it's not letting me uh, emit. So we got arrow function here. Socket dot one disconnect. We've got filter. And the filter ends here. But for some reason, some reason I can't just call the sockets. Maybe, maybe we're hitting the sockets before sockets has a chance to be enabled. Um, well, why don't we try and let it emit and see what happens? It must have just been uh, the debugger being crazy and losing the scope of things. Oh, we don't. Yeah, no, we checked the length of that. That's fine. So. I, I know what it is. We're not checking if that actually... That might not exist. Because mm. there's never else. So we're saying if that one's equal to that one, but that one might have also been removed before... beforehand, so... Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. It's because if you have two players in a session, when, the, when one player leaves, that session gets cr deleted. But if the other player leaves, there's no se session to delete. So we need to make sure that there is actually a session. So this needs to be an else if as opposed to an elf. Elf? <laughs> as opposed to an else. It's weird though, because sh the sh session shouldn't exist anymore. Oh. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm not deleting the session. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm not doing any. That's the thing. There's no, I'm not doing any session management, in um, when when the play disconnects, that's what's missing, and that's why it's crashing. So we need to uh, do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this logic here that's remove session from list of sessions, and turn it into its own function. This dot remove session. I'm just gonna
and it's going to take game session as an argument. So we'll say private remove session. And it's going to take session game session argument. And we're just going to take this here. And then that'll do that for us. So what we can do now is go back to our code where we tell the other user that the session is now invalid. And as well as emitting, emitting an event to say that the player is disconnected, what we'll also do is at the end here, just say this dot remove session. And then leaving player session, index of zero. There we go. And then that way, hopefully, we won't get into that loop again and it won't crash the uh, app. That was a little... Uh, see, this is the thing, programming. Sometimes you can get yourself into a right knot and you're like, this is definitely working when it isn't. So, <laughs> you just witnessed that first hand. You're getting really, really confused. So do we have any uh, web developers out there? Maybe any game developers or aspiring game developers or aspiring web developers? Maybe we have some PHP developers or some Java developers. <laughs> I'll stop. Someone just left. <laughs> okay, so... Ah, AEM -A -E underscore developer. The name suggests that you might be a developer. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop saying the word developer. <laughs> developers, developers, developers. <laughs> okay, so... Do I give this a go? Alright, let's give this a go. Let's see if it... If it chooches. How to get it chooching. Oh, zero viewers. That's painful. So that's built and we're gonna start it up. Match together, let's play a game. Right, cool. And they got rematched. So we've got Rick and Morty playing against each other, and for once, Morty wins. <laughs> okay, so let's set, get Morty to disconnect. Jeez, Rick, I'm gonna disconnect now. And they disconnected. So we then start up again, take there, and now we're gonna have Pickle Rick versus Rick. And Pickle Rick and Rick matched. So Rick is going to throw his rock. And Pickle Rick's going to use his paper. And Pickle Rick wins, because of course he does. But then Rick decides to leave. To leave Morty to clear up the mess. So Morty's like, jeez. Jeez, Rick. I don't think we should do this. And we just matched up with Pickle Rick. Pickle Rick is susceptible to scissors because he's paper. <laughs> okay, so that's all seems to be working now. That's that's pretty good. Um, so let's introduce a third player in the equation. Let's see how that handles. Oh. 
Oh god, damn. Third person. So, will Bird Person be matched with uh, Morty or Pickle Rick if uh, they finish the game? No. So, I'm guessing that's because in the list of unmatched players, we always go on to the. Uh, let's have a look. So when we match the players up, we pick from the array. We just pick the unmatched players. And we take the first two. I'm wondering if maybe we could make that more random. You know, sort of randomise them. And then that way they won't always get matched for the same people over and over again. We could say if there's if there's only two players, we obviously want to match player one and two. But we actually want it to be a bit of a raffle if uh, there's more. Just a player. Oh, I see it in a uh, set interval. At set interval, it uh, matches the players. Just thinking about my uh, logic here. So just kind of momentarily, like every every second, tries to match the players together. But it could easily pick random. So I match player zero and one. So we can make it do a random number based on how much players at length. And then we could say first player, let first player index and also second player index. And then we could say, choose a number between first player index equals math.random. And then we just need to do a little bit of, yeah, we need to have a length. What you do is you say mass at random times by times by playlist length. Just trying to uh,
Okay, so we want to take math.random times pi, that number, plus 1. That's between 1 and 10, so yeah, so we want 0 and, and the number, so. And then we want floor it, so math. I think it produces a decimal number otherwise. Yeah, so. Okay, so we've got ourselves a random index generator. And then what we want to do is say. Do the same again. And we want to do do that while This should hopefully add a little bit more randomness to who matches with who. So let's look at that again then. So we're taking two indexes, we're randomizing the range of possible values by with it obviously being the max being the length of the list. And we're gonna match that up there. And then the second try, we're gonna try and do the same thing again. And we're gonna do that uh, we're going to basically loop on that if the number is the same as the first number because you don't want to match play with themselves and then once that number isn't that it doesn't match then we assign the match player to there and then we need to take the indexes and log them out and then we also need to create a session with player one using that index and player two with that index. Okay. And then we're also broadcasting on the sockets as well in the same manner. So. Then hopefully we'll have a nice, somewhat random matching system. Like I said before, I'm having a little bit of trouble terminating the server instance, so I'm going to... Oh no, it actually worked this time. There we go. Okay, so we're going to rebuild this. Hope for the best. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have something where the player session matching is a little bit more random. I'll open a few windows and we'll see how uh, maybe four players match with each other. And we'll see that it alternates. Okay, so that's been built and we're going to start it. Front end hasn't changed, so we can keep that as it is. And we'll open a fourth player here as well. So we have Morty, Pickle Rick, Bird Person. And we'll make, we'll also have, what other character on Rick and Morty can we use? <laughs> Mr. Me Seeks. I'm Mr. Me Seeks, look at me. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so it starts again. So now, now we're really cooking on gas. We've got four players. Oh, blank player. We should do some validation around that as well. Oh, I'm, just, I'm seeing so many things that we can add to the list for uh, further streams. I don't want to do them right a lot of them right now because they're not in the plan, but um, definitely give us ideas. So Rick, Morty, 
and they still match, so that's good. But on the next one, they might not necessarily match with each other. So we've got Rick and Morty, then we've got Mr. Me Seeks. And we got Bird Person. Okay. So they match with each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit scissors for him, paper for him, rock for him, and they've matched. Oh, scissors the thing. Got to outrun it. So it's, it's quite difficult to do with him. Just rock, rock. Problem is, it's not happening concurrently. <laughs> it's like if I put a, a, a larger delay in the uh, matchmaking thing, I might be able to just kind of. Okay, well, that's how we're going to test it. We're going to put a delay into the, uh, the matchmaker so that it only pulls every five seconds, we'll say. Then that way we can just spam them all and then they'll hopefully rematch with other players. Just wait for the server to disconnect. Disconnect! <laughs> that wasn't very funny. <laughs> yep, it's, it's doing the same thing again. I'm not having very good luck with this terminal tonight. And run build. Ah, that went to server there. That's went to a completely different. <sighs> Try that again. Okay, so server, CD server. Okay, npm run build. So yeah, it's gonna have a longer delay now so that we can hopefully get the players to match up with different players. Um, I think five seconds is enough to do that if I just spam the buttons. And you'll see the, uh, the sessions rearrange. Okay, so that's built. And then we're gonna npm start. I also want to do a stream where I deploy this as well because I have actually deployed this in production to a S3 bucket and then I've deployed the WebSocket server to a Heroku dyno. Um, oh, they're all they connected, so yeah, I, I would really like to do that one time. So we'll just. Okay, so I'm gonna have Rick, I'm gonna have Morty. And Mr. Me Seeks. And we're going to have a person. Right, and I've just got to spam these. So it's going to take six seconds to, to match now. Um, so it's like scissors, rock, pipe, rock, pipe. <laughs> well, hopefully, in six seconds. Yep, yeah, okay. So now Mr. Me Seeks is matched with Rick, and Bird Person is matched with Morty. So, we've got, it has worked, which is good. So if we just do that again, paper, paper, rock, paper. See, it was a rematch there. So now Rick's match with their bird person and Morty's match with Mr. B6. So yeah, it does work. Ooh, something worked. <laughs> and we get, get like a sign, you know, like on the stream thing, something worked and then confetti comes down. <laughs> That's just my life. As a programmer, so but yeah, that's good. Okay, so we've got oh, or should we test the disconnected thing as well? So Mr. Me Seeks has been connected with Morty. So if Morty quits, Mr. Me Seeks should get a yep, disconnected. So yes, yeah, it's looking good. Okay, okay, so 
I'm going to do for a brief second is I am going to go on to Facecam. Hello. <laughs> I'm just going to commit the code and everything. Uh, it's usually push sort of like shows up a lot of like git stuff so I'm just doing that. Um, so hopefully everybody's having a good uh, good night with the stream. Um, I'm uh, trying to stay committed and uh, trying to do Sunday nights. Uh, I've been finding it good fun. Hopefully everybody else has. We've got uh, a few, a couple of new uh, followers, so you know it's uh, it's always good to see. Uh, just reviewing my code. So, just out of curiosity, when would people prefer to have one of these kind of streams? I, I don't know. I know some people who are in like Canada on this. Um, so they want they usually like it later, you know, from a, a UK point of view. Um, but is there a particular day of the week that people prefer it to a Sunday? Um, I don't know whether this is like a quiet um, time of the week to do, or you know, I don't know. Because uh, uh, I mean, I think I'd probably be most energised on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Um, but I'm usually busy, like yeah, on a, on a Friday, on Victory Royale. <laughs> the southern message there. Um, yeah, Victory Royale. Woo! But yeah, um, I've been doing I've been doing Sundays because it's it's probably the most convenient for me. But um, would uh, anybody prefer different days? I don't. Okay, so that's fine, and, and that's okay. I am going to check look at these ES link rules as well. Like, uh, I do I do think that uh, we should follow the ES link rule of single quotes rather than double quotes. I don't know how to change prettier settings. Um, okay, that's fine. Very good. Yep. So we're going to be able to move a few things over the over the board here uh, this uh, stream, which is great. Um, I'll bring the board up in a second, and we can go through. Um, okay. So added added um, next game. Matchmaker. Yeah, I'm just uh, doing a commit now so that you guys can uh, pull this if you want to and uh, and uh, just keep on with it. Yeah. So, added next game functionality to Matchmaker. Um, added ability to terminate sessions after. Moves are submitted. Um, handled player disconnection. And what else did we do? Mm, that's it. Made made uh, play matching more random. Um, we did put a delay, I did put a delay in there. I'm going to keep that in for now because um, it's good for for demo purposes. So. I can all go in there, and yeah, okay. That should all commit. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try and push that via the terminal. Yeah. Okay. So git push. I wouldn't usually be funny about this. Um, it's just it was it was a git pushing it. I mean, it's good to see git commands being done, but for some reason, it always asks me for my credentials. Um, so uh, I'm just keeping that off screen. So um, so you get my face. Ah, okay. So Sunday's a good night, a good day. Cool. No worries. I'll stick at it then. Um, and, I kept the, the five second delay in uh, just because we might want to do a little bit more demoing about and it might need the delay for that. You know, like if we're doing any more stuff with like random sessions, but it's very easy to remove, it's just a timeout. So um, normally it polls every second, but it's polling every uh, every five at the moment. So um, 
Okay, that's been pushed to GitHub now, so feel free to uh, pull the uh, updated uh, repo um, if you're playing long at home. <laughs> okay, so. so let's see what we've got anyway. I think we can move some tasks over the board now, so. Um... So, do some housekeeping. Write code to handle completed sessions. Remove deleted sessions from list of sessions, we've done that. Uh, report back to clients when sessions have ended. We've done that. Update UI to say registering with server for when users contact server for a match but the server hasn't replied yet. We haven't done that, so we'll do that next. Um, improve client server messaging. Implement an event for when the server successfully added a play to the list of uh, match clients so the client's UI can show when the user is connecting to the server and when the server has begun to look for a match and play. So those two go together. And we've got implement mechanism to keep track of paired players that can be referenced with it when users make moves. Quit session, request a rematch. I think we've basically covered that. Um, we do. Oh, we still don't return the the, the user's move, um, which I think we should do, definitely do next above these two here. So I'm going to move that to the top of the list. Um, also, just as a, as a sort of an overview, um, for people who who are interested in, in software development and ha don't, haven't actually got any you know like real world experience like industrial experience um, and what i'm using here is uh, what's called kanban board um i'm not sponsored by coca cola <laughs> that was <laughs> that wasn't product placement that was just me holding my bottle up to pour it um yeah uh, that's a kanban board and basically what we do there is uh, we have our to do's uh, yep oh you don't you can't see the board yeah of course i'm gonna put the board on sorry uh, there you go, there's the board. <laughs> there we go. Okay, this is the board. Um, basically, it's a Kanban board. Um, and what we do here is it's just a list of things that we have to do, things in progress and things done. You can have multiple different lanes, um, but this is like just like the, the most simplest version of a Kanban board. Just keep, allows you to take a task, um, work on the task, and then say when it's done. And you can measure um, how much work you've done. Um, in industry, we would have things called story points associated with these these tasks. So th these would represent features, and uh, basically, you'd be given in a sprint if you were doing Scrum, you'd be given a certain amount of story points to work on, and you'd have to complete that in the sprint. Um, this is more free form. It's Kanban. It's uh, you know, I'm not putting story points against things, but uh, it's the principle's the same. I'm doing work, and then I'm moving the tasks over to the board. So. Um, apologies for not showing the board there. I've moved a few things over. I moved this stuff here over. So now we only have uh, three projects, three pre three projects, three tasks, sort of in in floor. Um, we're going to do this one next, I think. Implement a mechanism to keep track of paired players. We reference. Yeah, that was it. What, what we're going to do in that one to, to fulfil that one. That one is almost done. Is we're going to actually send back what move the player made. So if you made paper move and they made rock, and you won, let's find out how you won. So it would say player versus opponent won. Um, oh, we'll put it in like brackets. Player rock opponent this. You know, you know we'll do that anyway. So. It makes sense. It's just all about. We just got to update the uh, data object that we're uh, passing back in the WebSocket. So let's get on with that now. Let's talk more code. Okay. Right, so. Let's close some of these windows. Speaking of which, I'm going to close my actual windows. I'll be back in a moment.
Okay, I'm back now. <laughs> okay, so, uh, could you... Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay. Sorry, I had to, literally had to close my windows there, and they've been open all day, and I'm in the other room, it's getting dark now, so, and it's cooling down a little bit, so it's been like 25 degrees today, so. Okay, so, we're going to add some, some new functionality to an existing feature, which is that we're going to tell, say, we're going to say in the, in the sockets which player, well, we're going to say what move they made. Um, when the player lost or won, so we're going to oh. so what we're doing at the moment is we're patching, passing the match decision so if player move submitted tell player won the match decision and that's win, lose or draw but what we really want to do is say what move they made so always gets me that I always try and click in the uh, before view when we have done a git um, commit and it's trying to show me the, uh, the diff Okay, so we're going to pass the match decision. If we pass the match decision, what we want to do is say uh, opponent move. <clears throat> and we find that out by doing play sessions 0. Play 2.move. Which is of type play and move. We might have to implement a play and move on the service on the client side. Oh, oh yes, pretty is just formatted that for us. I don't think I like that though. Indentation there. Shouldn't it be like that? Okay, pretty, fair enough. If pretty says it's correct. Oh I see, right, yeah, that would make sense because it's 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 because it's uh, of that length. It's putting that into a new line. That's fair enough. Okay, so opponent move, that's player two, and then move. So what we want to do is mirror that here. Opponent move, and that would be player one. Okay, and let's just remind ourselves what that player move is. So. Two definitions. Oh, I see. There'll be one on the client side, one on the server side. That's interesting. Did I define it twice? Rock paper scissors. I'm sure player moves will exist on the uh, on the other side. You know, pair up. If not, we can do that. Player moves, exactly the same. Okay, then, that's great. So what we can do now is, now we're passing that back, we can use that information to provide a bit more DL when, when the player wins, loser draws. So, oh, <laughs> I've just seen Alec asking, what happens when you run out of coke? Well, I'll just switch to water. <laughs> Quite good though. Keeps the uh, the old throat nice and uh, limber for uh, talking on talking for hours on a stream. <laughs> okay, so at one point somebody was saying that this was like the top three um, programming stream. Um, on Twitch, I was like, "Wow!" I mean, not many people do them, but it's still quite a. It's quite a shock. I think we had about ten viewers at that time, um, which was pretty amazing. I mean, uh, like I say I'm just starting out with this, so it's, uh, it's everything's you know grateful for everything. It's uh, it's good to see people are interested in this kind of stuff. I'm just uh, still working on my uh, presentation technique. 
But this has helped me, it's good practice. It's good practice. So we go back to our lobby. And we go back to decision. So on player decision, we take the match decision. And at the minute we take the past match results. But what we want to do now is say data dot go oh, back to this is why I should have put this into a second tab. It's very hard to keep track of the server and the client at the same time in the same IDE. This is why I'd usually have if I had more screens, which I might do in the future. Maybe I could set up some virtual desktops or something like that and uh, it would make it easier to cycle through things. Uh, save your aim. Okay, so uh, opponent move. So we want to say what the opponent's move was and who they are. How do you do that? So and we also want to report on the player's move. So player move. And this dot. Do we not actually report? Keep store that, because that's interesting if we don't. Send player move. We don't? Okay. Let's store that as last move. So what we'll be able to do now is uh, provide more information to the user um, about which move kind of either they won against or lost against. So opponent move equals data dot put that into another screen there. Okay, opponent move, I knew it was called that. Memory like a sieve. Opponent move, data dot opponent move, and play move is last move. So that way now we can change it so that our list of victories and losses and draws is a little bit more descriptive. So past match results push. Okay. So we take our component, put it in there. Oh, I mean our template. There we go. Just collapse this for a second so we can get a bit more real estate. Okay, so what we can say now is result.player name and then in brackets say result dot player move. And then what we can do is it say opponent opponent move. Do a rebuild of the uh, server. Cool. And we'll restart the client. Hello. No, I'm, oh, I've done it again. <laughs> Went into, didn't go into my uh, client folder. So I've been, I was trying to serve the client from the root folder. I'm going to have to put some instructions in the uh, in the readme because it is a little bit a bit more complicated than not like if you had a separate client and a separate server. I've I decided to go down the mono repo route, so you have to go into the separate folders and then run all the client specific commands and then all the server specific commands. But never mind. Okay, so. 
I like that I uh, put the face cam on and then three people left. <laughs> I don't take it personally. Alright, so that's built now, so we're going to start the server and search, serve the client. Yeah, one of the maintenance tasks I need to do as well is upgrade the version of Angular to Angular 6. I don't think there was any major breaking changes, but it's always good to start the date with everything, so. Uh, but the server's running. Ah, oh, there we go. Situation we're handling. Yeah, that was it. So, yeah, Mike. I'm going to start a game now. Mike 2. Register. Put that there. On Windows. And Mike. And I'll match in five seconds because I've still got the uh, delay in. Okay, so they're matched. And scissors versus paper. Oh, I've obviously got something wrong there. I think I know what it is. I'm not passing the uh, parameters back. In yeah, okay. There's a little bit of a problem there. Player move, opponent move. Last. Oh, we're not signing last move. That's what it is. Last move. I mean, we're not signing last move, and there are also the numbers because we haven't got a getter to transform those into strings. So last move equals let's start last move equals move. So what we'll get now is numbers. So start this up. Make one and make two. And then they're matched together. You see, we got two and one. So now we need to translate those into actual strings. So what? What's Get result type from match result. Okay, so we'll make a function called get move type from player say get move get player move. Yeah, let's get player move. And what we'll do is we'll pass in a thing of player an item of move, which is a type player move or player moves. And we'll just do a similar thing here where we we'll use a, a switch. So switch our move. Case player moves dot Um, rock. Play moves dot paper. Turn paper. And I bet you can't guess the last one. <laughs> Uh, 
there we go. Okay, so let's go back, make sure we've got that correct. Oh, well, we haven't written it in yet, so what we'll do is result.player move now needs to become get player move of result.player move and then get player move of result dot opponent move and then now when we refresh this we should have it like written written as a string now so it would say uh, Mike and Bob because we haven't seen Bob tonight not in the match so when Mike says paper and Bob says rock. It gets represented properly, and it gets added to the list of moves. So that's all good. I think that's uh, fulfilled the criteria of adding more DL to the request. So now we know. Implement mechanism to keep track of paired players. We've done that. We've got a list of sessions. Um, we now handle quitting of the session and requesting a rematch. We actually haven't got a rematch button, but it's because we've made that automatic. Uh, Alec Jones earlier suggested that we just rematch the players as after they uh, finish the game. Um, so I'm, I'm going, I've done that, and it means that we don't have to do request a rematch. Um, it's just random, so. Um, I think that, that fills that. I mean, put that into the done pile now, so. That's great. Update UI to say registering the server is correct so for a match, but server hasn't applied yet. Yeah, okay. That's definitely one we can do now. Like I said, I know this is the UI is pretty ugly at the moment. I am gonna do a separate stream. Like I said, my plan is to uh, get myself a, uh, a stand like this one here for the microphone um, that has a, a, a camera mount on it and um, to have an overhead, overhead view so I can draw it out, draw out the UI and uh, show everyone. And then we can implement the UI using uh, HTML and CSS. Um, I'm actually uh, a front-end developer by profession, so this UI is a bit of a disgrace. To <laughs> it, it doesn't reflect my uh, normal, you know. Normally, I'd be writing a lot of uh, UI, um, but I don't know. I just find the code so interesting. So, <laughs> so I, um, I kind of got carried away with implementing the logic, but the logic—it's the fun bit. <laughs> In my opinion, in this particular project, anyway. But we can make it really cool. I'm thinking we can, you know, get some like SVGs and some tiles, and when we f hover over them, have a little effect that make it like zoom in and out a little bit, and uh, put some nice fonts there. And yeah, it'd be good. Um, be all good. But that's probably I'm probably going to do that in a different stream because I think, I think uh, you know, your head needs to be in a certain place to do. Do that, that aspect of it. I'm just focusing on the logic at the moment, so. I'm gonna do a, a code review soon. I'll get these features done, and then uh, then we'll do a code review. You know, look through it, and then take it from there, so. Update UI to say, registering the server for user, yeah, for when users contact server match, but um, server hasn't, been replied, hasn't replied yet. That's pretty easy to do, so we'll, we'll, we'll start with that, so. Just close this for now. So we have a template, and at the minute, what we do is say that we're registered with the matchmaking server and we're finding an opponent, um, but we don't know whether they've actually started to find the opponent or not. So, what we're going to do is say contacting. Match server. And then what we're going to do is say if server. 
acknowledged. Server acknowledged player, maybe. Or oh, server. I'll say server acknowledged player. We'll say. We should go back to what we said before. I mean, we are going to do that. I just can't remember what the string said. There we go. Registered. Yeah, there we go. I'll just take that back again. I'm going to take the two inch brush and we're just going to beat the devil out of it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn my uh, face camera off for a little while. This might feel like a face fatigue. <laughs> okay, so server acknowledge player. Notice me, server. <laughs> okay, so uh, register with matchmaker servers, finding you an opponent. Can't actually match server, please wait. We'll say I think we can get away with just server acknowledge player. Public server noise player is a type boolean. Then what we'll do is we're going to create a new a new socket I/O event and. We're just going to say that the player has been acknowledged, so this dot on player acknowledged. Equals this dot socket service dot on player acknowledged. I mean, we subscribe to something that doesn't exist yet, <laughs> so we're going to have to do that. Um, we aren't going to send any data back, we're just telling the player that they've been acknowledged and that they're uh, connected to the server. So this dot player acknowledged on... server acknowledged player equals true. And this is another thing we want to reset when you start a new game. So start new game. Oh, no viewers. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so. Got a lot more done this um, during the stream. Um, I think it's because we had to do a lot of groundwork before. Um, this has been a little bit easier. So yeah, basically now it's trying to it's trying to uh, subscribe to an event that doesn't exist. So we're gonna have to create that. Um,
done that again. Got a return the observable. Of type any. And then you got a set of return type is an observable. Of any. So we want return observable There we go. Observer dot next. And then that way the uh, UI gets updated because the component is made aware of the socket. Uh, posting a message to the clients. So player acknowledged and once that comes in it will tell the UI to update. So on player acknowledged, oh yep, yeah, so we still need to find that in the air, uh, just above the constructor. On player acknowledged and um, we've got our uh, player acknowledged. Yep. Yeah. So now we need to implement that in the server. And the way we do that is we look and we look connect. And we got the part where the player got added, player got added to the list of players. So right here, right here we're going to uh, emit a uh, socket event. So this dot io dot dot connected and then we're going to pass socket dot id and then emit something and what we're going to emit is the player acknowledged event so hopefully when we uh, rebuild this we're going to be able to see when the player's actually been acknowledged and the message should update. So npm run build. Front end updates itself. But we do have to do a build for the back end, so and I'm almost out of colour. Do let me know if the music's too loud. I uh, it's just a little bit of background ambient music. It's just uh, I did turn it up when there was a, a bit of a break there. Okay, so let's start the server. quick to see if anything happened. So Rick. Yeah it's kinda instantaneous so I think what we need to do is unfortunately put another delay in. <laughs> okay so player acknowledged oh and also we may not have updated the template yet to to actually say otherwise than that. Right, I think what we need to do is not emit that for a second. Oh, 
Let me get a rebuild. So it does work. So if the server were being a little slow, it would just say connect and match server. And then when they actually connected. So we just need to add a condition in there to show, make sure that the previous message doesn't show. So. Everybody just type on now and then. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. Server acknowledged player. There we go. Oh, the server didn't actually. No, no, I did, so. Yeah, we've re enabled that event now, so let's build that again. Got an error here, apparently. It might have fixed itself. Ah. There we go. Server acknowledged player. And start that up. It all works. <laughs> cool. Okay, so... I think I'm getting quite close to wrapping it up now. Um, we've uh, implemented updating the UI to say register on the server, so if there was like a delay in the server uh, in loading, then uh, the user will be updated with the appropriate response. So that can go into done now. Implement event for when server has successfully added list of players to a match player so that the client UI can show when the user is connecting with the server and when the server began to look for matching players. Yep, I've done that. So basically, the board is clear for, the, for tonight for the tasks that, tasks that I've taken on. Um, so, what I'm going to do now, since we've been streaming for three hours, um, is I'm going to commit all the code. Um, I've got a few good things now to take from here. I can add more tasks to the to the board. Um, I think ne the next stream is going to be focused on implementing UI. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of CSS and all that kind of stuff, all the fun stuff. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna uh, gonna uh, wrap up now. But we've got some exciting stuff ahead. Um, 
it's unlikely that I'll um, stream next Sunday, but we'll see what happens. If not, it will be the Sunday after. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the stream. I hope everybody has a good night and just keep learning um, and download the project from here. Feel free to uh, fork, modify, and uh, just play around with this. I'll update the README uh, during the week so that the instructions are a bit clearer on how to build and set up. Um, anyway, I'm going to uh, probably sign out now. So, have a good night, everybody, and see you soon.